So what is the three minute game? Yes. <laughs> All right. The three minute game. So after I moved away from Betty Martin and the Wheel of Consent, I just met the creator of the three minute game. His name is Harry Feddes. He is now nearly in his 80s. Uh, he is a gay man working in not broke back mountains, but somewhere outside of New York in a, in a mountain retreat center where he's teaching gay men about consent and play, so it's a retreat center. And he came up in a BDSM workshop on uh, power, surrender and intimacy with this dynamics when people come together and want to have a fair share of engagement that um, you need to have the time frame and then you need to know who's doing the action and who is it for. Yeah. And then he said, and that was based on the Rumi poem, you must ask for what you really want, don't go back to sleep. And the other dynamic from the 12 step program, uh, I think is a second step, you need to give your power to a greater power than yourself to save your sanity, where the person who is in action and doing the action is giving the gift of power for the other person to surrender to save their sanity. So each and one of you need to have the capacity to give your power to somebody else, a greater power than yourself, that you can finally surrender. Because if you're in a position where somebody has not their power together and is not in the right position, you cannot surrender. You've, you know, you can't. It's just a neurological impossibility. So the three minute game is that when you play it from this perspective, you come pretty close to BDSM dynamics. Yeah. So Betty Martin was at that workshop. She took that, brought that home, and then she created this alienated version of the three-minute game in her Wheel of Consent structure. Yeah. Okay. I allow myself to say that because I know her dearly. So, what I want to show you. The shadows. First of all, we all have shadows. For fuck's sake, they're important, they're survival strategies. We need them. Yeah. We are all well resourced that we have them. And to make them wrong, it just like takes your mechanism away to adapt yourself. So when you're not safe, you need that. But when you're safe, it's a different thing. Yeah. But your shadows, you know, your entire personality structure from the first day your entire social engagement, the way how have, you, how have you evolved, is based on different experiences in your life. As I said that two days ago in this, just like, okay, you're safe, let's get naked and have an orgy. You know? there as many people in the room are different perceptions of that, what is being said, and the experience is different for different people. So that means you need your shadows, but not in every case of life. Yeah? So, but... So... The shadows. Here at the festival, at the Tanta festival, it's kind of not so fun and cool if the shadow's coming up. Yeah? You do emotional release or you just try to work through them. There are other festivals. Some of you might know some dynamics of BDSM. Some of you have heard about the Explore in Berlin. Yeah, some knows that. It's just like, they fucking love to play with the shadows. You have workshops just about the shadows and then you bring awareness to them and you play with them. Yeah. But this is not welcome in every environment. So you, you need to be aware what you do when they come up and how to engage with them. So it just needs a certain level of awareness. So I was diving deep into that stuff. And then I found the work from Madori. She's as well a BDSM practitioner, um, a mistress. Uh, she's uh, doing shibari from New York, Japanese. And she talked about the personal development in BDSM through transforming the shadows. Because if you hang out your entire life in the comfort zone of trying to avoid to make mistakes, you will not evolve. Yeah, full stop. So, but we want to do that consciously. We want to have one foot in the comfort zone and the other one outside. 
and then just like, oh my god, that's scary. Can I can I dare to do that? Can I try that? I don't know if that's possible. And then just like, okay, it's I'm safe enough. I'm not feeling pushed or pressured. I can try that. Yeah. And then you have an experience. You learn something new, and then you grow, and that gives a personal developmental structure that becomes a spiritual journey. Yeah. And the best way to practice that, in my experience. Is in relationship, yeah, and in the first relationship to yourself. Yeah, as I said, that was self-love. So you just need to have that in place first. So the shadows are okay, but if we don't need them, we don't want them. So then there is a line that is the so-called the baseline. Yeah? The baseline is everything you have a right to and a responsibility for. Your right to and a responsibility for. What do you have a right to and a responsibility for? Eating. Eating. Being. Being. Health. Your health. Joy. <coughs> Love. Love. Work. Or money. <coughs> Work, money, yeah. What was that? Express your boundary limits. Yes. Okay, your body, your emotions, your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings, your desires, your joy, the whole spectrum, yeah. <laughs> You have this right to that and you have the responsibility for that. Yeah. Yeah? Each and one of us. And that is an inside job. Now we can do that to you or for you. You have to do it to yourself first. And if somebody is interfering in your base yeah, and tell you, now you have to be happy, now you have to do this, and now you have to believe that, that sucks. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So the base is the foundation for self-love and self-care. So what we have done on two days ago in that Consent is Sexy workshop, I would like you to do that again. Take something in your hands. And for the, for the rest of what we're doing here in this lecture, just feel it for yourself. So the sensory inflow of your nervous system related to touch and pleasure is your base. You need that. You need to be capable of going in action and feeling for yourself <coughs> independent from anything or anybody else. Doesn't matter who they are or what their response is or what comes back. You need to have that in place as the core of yourself. So self-love, self-care. Yeah? Inflow, feeling, sensing, please. I want Queen to say since yesterday, I am all the time and look at it beautiful. I can afford Wow, it. that's awesome. I'm playing with it, I think, or I make a noise for others, but really, and I remember all the time, it was yesterday, perfect thing to use to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Touching. yeah. So, for each and one of <laughs> us, and that happens, I think, in the 10th week when we are in the uterus or mother's womb. The sense of touch is the first sense that is developed. And our entire structure of personal development is based on that. But most of us have forgotten it. So my intention and my work and what I do is I just try to bring that back in myself and everybody who is curious and interested about that. What you do with that, is, again, is a choice. Yeah? But if you just <coughs> have the intention to dive a little bit deeper, this self-love, this sensory inflow, your feeling, your sense of touch, will create another neurological wiring in your nervous system, how you relate with yourself and relate with others, and how you relate with the world. So. You have here kind of the shadow place if you just want to be orgasmic and loving that kind of doesn't work so well it's a kind of a 
more like a no place, yeah? So orgasm and shadow <laughs> kind of doesn't really fit in my world. From a neurological perspective, uh, the polyvagal theory, some of you might know about that, there's one specific neurological state in there. It's a hybrid state. And that hybrid state is on the safe side of your nervous system between social engagement, yeah, how you engage with other people, and sympathetic, so you are in action and you move. And in this hybrid state of your nervous system, this is the only place in the nervous system where pleasure, where joy, sensuality, and sexuality is actually possible. Yeah, so I just described that in my book. <laughs> so if you're curious about that, you know, I've German engineered that all in detail, so you'll find more about that. But just right now, let's say this is the let's say this is the yes place yeah the hybrid spa space this is where we want to go when we are orgasmic sensually sexually with another being or with ourself yeah i guess you have difficulties being orgasmic if you just go to grand central station and just put your pants down and just <laughs> yes yeah that doesn't work neurologically not for all <laughs> not for all <laughs> But if you just go here in the forest and find a sunny spot somewhere and just like you're on your own, just like, oh my God, sunshine and wind and nature and birds and just like, and just oh, my, this is so good. <laughs> or I don't know. <laughs> okay. So let's say down here is the shadows. There is this no place. And up here is the yes place, the orgasmic spiritual journey where you all want to be. So now, <laughs> I have to say it, you know, I just will make a German joke. <laughs> and some of you might know German jokes, they're not funny. <laughs> the only people can laugh about German jokes are the Germans, because they're so stupid, the jokes. But I just did it anyway, because Switzerland is very close to Germany. You, you might get it there. So, from this base, yeah, so to avoid the no place, from here, how do you get up to that yes place? How do you reach that yes place? Is that our senses? Yes. More? So you can't say it wrong. That's part of the joke. Integrate the shadows. The shadows? Integrate. Integrate the shadows? Yeah. Listen to, your Listen to your needs? From a place of trust? Yes. Regulate yourself? Yes. Easier, simpler. Simpler. How do you get from here to here? Love. Love, yeah. Simpler than that? Walk. <laughs> Move. Just Walk. Line. Yeah! You're the first person ever who did that! <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Jesus Christ! You draw, you draw a line. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. So now, now we can talk. Yeah. You go from this place down here where you keep your base in check, where you, where you take radical self-responsibility for your limits, your needs, your desires to balance this entire shebang. <sighs> breath. Then you ask on one side for permission, so the may I question. Yeah? And the other one is agreement. Will you? Yeah. So when I jumped into this dynamics with Betty Martin and I said just like, fuck, I'm sold. You know, I was a tantric body worker, facilitator. Uh, I've done sessions and all that. And I said, I, I want to do that. And she said, just like, if you want to learn to give it, you have to receive it first. And I said, how do I do that? Is this, yeah, just start three-minute game sessions with your clients. And I've thrown everything out of the window for six years, and I did a few hundred three-minute game sessions. 
And there is this quote from Plato, you learn more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. And when you play the three minute game in this dynamics, so the four different ways of touch, I do what I want, you do what you want, you do what I want, and I do what you want. When you play that a few hundred times with a few people, a hundred, few hundred people, there will be something shift, I promise you that. You learn something profound about yourself and other people. It's really, really amazing. It's awesome. Um, so, now here comes the German engineering. Because um, I see, I feel in a multidimensional structure. So, I see in pictures, I feel in pictures. Uh, this is what I saw. You can see that? It's a pyramid. Yeah. And then you have here from the base this developmental structure. Yeah. It's not like you say, oh, I know the three, three minute game, I know how to touch, to feel, I've done that in the festival. So do that a few hundred times, you will develop, you will come up super easy, you know how to use that stuff up here. Okay. Does it make sense so far in my world to dive into this? Not much? Oh my god. So please ask question. Who have I lost? Okay. I'm totally happy to explain if you, if you don't get it. I just didn't get the pyramid thing. Uh, the transition between the triangle and the pyramid. Between the triangle and the pyramid. So that was a German joke. So you have the base here. Yeah. The base is self-love, self-care. Your body, your feelings, your thoughts, your desires, self-responsibility and that stuff. And I said, that's like, okay, how do you go from the no place or from the base to avoid the no place up here in the yes place, the orgasmic place? Like Grand Central Station or the forest where you just feel yourself, just like get orgasmic. And then I asked the question, how do you get here? And then People say, just like you ask, you do love, you just go in connection. Yeah, I, I got that. I, I just didn't get why you um, made a pyramid out of the triangle. Okay, I said there are four different ways of touch. Oh. Yeah, okay. and you have the permission, the will you, and the may I. What is the request? But you have as well the offer. So if I want um, something, then I will ask and make a request. But if you want something, and you can't really ask for it, I can make an offer. I can say, hey, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything that you want me to do to you? Or is there anything that you want to do to me for the next three minutes? Anything that you would like? And I said, hmm, what is that? And then, yeah, I would like you to, I don't know, whatever comes up in your mind. So there are four different ways. Is it clear for everybody? So maybe I've missed that part. Well, if you, you don't have to. You don't have to go there. I mean, this is, <laughs> you can hang out here for the rest of your life. Yeah, so it's, this is the question. Do you like to thrive or do you like to survive? Is this overcoming the boundaries you find? Yeah, you become aware of your boundaries. You become aware of your limits when you... When become aware of them and when you use, when you need them, that you can um, adapt them and dive into them. So there's a saying about the boundaries. If you don't know that you have boundaries, just like, what are you doing? So sometimes we need to get our boundaries crossed that we need, that we find out that we have them. And then we can use this experience as setting our limits and engagement with another person. Yeah, so you can do this, but not that. Yeah? And if you never have experienced that, you know, the, the worst thing, a big warning to everybody, somebody said, you can do whatever you want, I have no boundaries. <laughs> it's a red flag. Yeah? Doesn't exist. Give me three seconds, I find your boundary. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, everybody is with me so far, yes, please. Uh, what, what I don't like about the picture is that it's uh, going like uh, this way. I would uh, make it open up. So if you develop just a yes place. Just, yeah. just for you. Yeah. So when you just look around the world, you know, the kind of the male fellows and what can I do is this way. Yeah. When you turn that thing around and you have the triangle down as the holy grail, that's the female side. Yeah, everybody get them. When you put them both together, you have the hexatetragon. I think this is how it calls. And when you put 64 of them together, then you have the <laughs> Kabbalah. But that's just a side track. Yeah? Okay. So everybody gets that idea? Yeah? It's, 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 it's not the circle of consent anymore, it's not the pyramid of consent. And it has a base. Yeah? The base is, you know, today's a relationship day. I have, a, I have an entire chapter in that book, The Course of Four Pillars of Relating. And this is the way how I relate. You want to hear that just for a second before we go into something? Okay. First layer is self-love, self-care. Yeah? If you don't have self-love and self-care in your place, relationship just sucks. Yeah? Everybody is responsible for somebody else's feeling. No, I'm responsible, you're responsible. I can feel for myself. Second one is... I give my partner permission to use me physically, emotionally, however, wherever she wants to. I'm heterosexual. And I take care of my limits. And I ask her for the same permission. Can I use you as well for my benefit whenever, however I want to, and you take care of your limits? Yeah, cool. Great. Second one. The third one is the agreement. If I want you to do something for me, I will ask you. If I don't ask for anything, I don't want anything. Other thing around. If you want me to do something for you, you need to ask me. It's not my job to lip read and, f and, 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 and please and f make you feel happy. That's your job. But if you want to make it my job, you need to ask for it. Yeah? I take care of my limits, you take care of your limits. So the third one. The fourth one is the yes place. This is where a relationship is really happening. This is an invitational space. It's a winning space. It's a place of where we become one, where we merge, where we flow, where giving and receiving merges together, where we make love and relationship and, you know, community. And, and then all of a sudden, just like we just dive a little bit and then... This is why relationships are so transformative. That's the relationship part of it. Okay? Wanna move on? Okay. So. <sighs> yes? Please what? Yes, 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 the, yeah, yeah, the shadow, the mirrors, the mirroring back, you know, and, and the shadow never comes on one side, the shadow always comes with the other side as well. So, let's say this is your base, what you have a right to, so now I draw the pyramid from on top. This is the base, what you have a right to and a responsibility for, yeah? self-love, self-care and the entire shebang. And then you have here the permission line. I'll just make that just a P. And you have here the agreement line. I'll just make it an A. Yeah. Then you have here your action. Ah. And here you have... This is... I don't know, you can't really see it, but... Your action, <laughs> their action. Yeah. On this side, it is for you. On this side, is for them. Here you ask, may I? Here you ask, will you? Make a request. Here you make an offer. Yeah, you can do that. And yes, I can do that. So. Ah, <sighs> God. Hmm. So, now I want to dive into the shadows, because this one here 
um, becomes easier when you know about your shadows. And now I want to tell you how to find your shadows. So I was yesterday in the temple and uh, I've seen that uh, over and over again in festivals and I've, I've been holding temples myself. And there's always, there are always people that get lost. They don't know what to do and then just like, oh my God, just like everybody has some fun, but just not me and uh, where do I belong? And this, there's a station, but there's the same, nothing is happening for me. And, and, and you might have found yourself as well lost in this thing, right? And it's easy to get lost in there. So let's say you have here the shadows and then you have here another shadow. So this is the rape shadow. This is the Lisa. And you have here the victim and you have here the, the entitled. Something. <laughs> Entitlement, entitled, privilege, lazy kind of uh, expectation, exploitation. This entire stuff. And that's the right corner, I think. I think this one is rape. Rape, abuse. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> War, invasion, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But now a much more important question is here on the receiving side when it's for you, where you make a request, this may I or will you questions. Why don't you ask for what you want? And just allow yourself to bubble it up. Why is it difficult? Why don't you ask for what you want? The hottest person in the room just has, just like right now, not together with anybody, just like this is the opportunity, just like, <coughs> why don't you ask for what you want? Fear of fear. rejection. Fear of rejection. Same. Same, fear of rejection. Shame. Shame. Don't, want don't want to disturb. Losing the face. Losing the face. I'm not worth. I'm not worth. Fear of success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't you ask for all you want? Just, we, I just made sometimes an entire workshop on that one. So we just, we just rush a little bit through here. So, but this is to show you how stuff evolves. Why don't you ask for what you want and just allow it for a moment? Maybe you don't know what you want. Maybe you don't know what you want. I have been there many times. Come on, everybody has it. There is no you can ask. Don't know you can ask. Cliche that you have not to ask for something. Cliche you have not to ask for something. Yeah. We are all conditioned as fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Protect the others. Protect the others. The fear of putting too much on the others. Putting too much on the others, yes. <coughs> can they handle that? Mm -hmm. Giving power away. Giving power away. Mm -hmm. Being received as a pervert, yes. Not wanting to seen as uh, be needing. needing Not something. wanting to seen as needy or wanting something. Fear of being judged. Fear of being judged. Or just you don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. I think you already know the outcome. You already know the outcome, yes. You so have an agenda in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, which um, there is struggle to say no. Yeah, yeah. So you want to take care of the other person that they can't take their limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they just do, they say yes, but me no. And then you just kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that one this is horrible. Come on, what's your favorite one? Why don't you ask her what you want? But maybe it's the wrong one I ask. It's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. How, how about then you just have to give something back or or what is if you don't like it then and you have to continue? Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. If you don't have the set the right time frame, you think Man, it takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to get married or something <laughs> or the other person has an expectation and you have to fulfill that. I don't know what what's going on in your mind. 
fear of hurting someone. So, so we could just bring that up, you know. The shadows are deep. We all have them and we need them. But not all the time. So here comes the second question. If you don't ask for what you want, what are you doing instead? Asking for what you think the other person wants. Mm. Or guessing. Guessing. Or ask the other person what they want. Ask the other person what they want. Expecting silence. Expecting silence. Is, can't we be spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> There's a chapter on spiritual bypassing in the book. Mm. Just yeah. waiting. Yeah. Just waiting, Someone yes. Yes, maybe somebody comes to me and yeah. gives me, uh, can lip read what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Being frustrated. Being frustrated, getting resentful, just like. Yeah, yes. Out, yeah. yeah. Flight. Flight, run away. Yeah. Say again? Pull back in a corner. Pull back in a corner, get hiding. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Use manipulation. Use manipulation, yeah. yeah. Trying to please. Trying to please, yes. Just talk about it, not doing mentally what we could do, but we don't do it. Yes. Yeah. Just take what you want. Just yeah. take what you want. Stealing. <laughs> yeah. Groping, grasping, kind of just like trying to do the stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Feels a little bit heavy, right? Yes. Yeah. Welcome to my world. <laughs> oh, I have you now. Okay, so asking for what you want is inherently vulnerable. It's inherently vulnerable. You make yourself vulnerable when you ask for what you want. It comes with a formula to find that, and I share that in a little bit. But first, I want to go on the other side, on the giving side. This is where your limits <coughs> and your kind of boundaries are, but more your limits. If somebody's asking you, maybe there are people here on the festival. They're just really good. I know how to ask. Yeah. Can, can you massage my dick? Can you just like kiss me? Can you just like spank me? Can you just like tell me that I'm horny and sexy? And you know, whatever you just, they can ask. And then, then they're just asking people. And the other person on the other side kind of just like um, has some difficulties to say no. Yeah, we all have difficult. I still come into places where it's difficult for me to say no. So now the question to you. Why is it difficult for you to say no? Or why could it be difficult for you to say no? To hurt someone. To hurt somebody that when they get vulnerable, that they're getting rejected. And then they judge you that you are not sensitive enough. Judging part you can leave aside, but just uh, yeah, yeah, part. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot of different stories, but that's enough. Yeah. Losing connection. Losing connection. Yes. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Yeah. Fear of being rejected the next time. Fear of being rejected the next time. Yeah. Not not being even approached. Just like oh, this is a no say. I'm not going there again. Yeah. Fear of being alone. Fear of being alone. Destroying dreams. Habits. Habits. Mm -hmm. People pleasing you. Fear of being seen as mean when you said no? Yeah, this is mean. How can you say no? Good girls say yes. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Where are you from? <laughs> Good boys as well. <laughs> okay, if you can't say no, what are you doing instead? Say yes. <laughs> say again. You say yes. You say yes. <laughs> yeah. Say half yes. You say half yes. Um, I, I, I learned a good thing in that regard. Every no is a yes to your own uh, desires and needs. Yeah. So there's always a yes and a no. Yeah. You just can express that a bit. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there is escape. There's escape. Yeah. I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> you need to go to the toilet, yes. <laughs> I have headache. <laughs> 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 
What was that? I have a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so finding excuses, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can also maybe um, ask if we can talk about the. How do you call that? Yesterday you called that the limits, but the other way around, verhandeln, basically. Negotiating. Uh, negotiating, negotiating yes. What would be possible. Yeah. yeah. yeah There's an entire another art form kind of to go in this direction. Mm -hmm. Harry Ferris used to say there's always something possible between people when they can communicate. Always something you can do. Somebody makes a request and you say, oh, you know, something called the spectrum of limits. And you might be a fuck no, just like not, or you're just like a hell yes. You say, yeah, yeah, I just want that too. And in between there is a, a lot of varieties. Just like, yeah, maybe not today. Ask me tomorrow. Not that, but that. Or, yeah, but just only a li limit of time or, you know, whatever negotiation is about. Yeah. Okay. Still heavy enough? Kind of just like it sucks, right? Uh. Okay, so that's the system. When you want to learn to ask for what you want, and when you want to learn to say no or express your limits to go up into this place where you can literally play and evolve, there's a formula to that. And I love this formula because it's so fucking simple. And that formula calls space. Oh God, spaciousness. Spaciousness. I don't know how to spell it right. Spaciousness. So spaciousness means. To find out what you want to ask this two question, may I or will you, whenever you go in the next temple or do something, the first one is you need enough time. Yeah, there's no pressure needed. It's like take a breath, relax. Yeah. No, don't push, follow the pull. There's something possible. So when you have enough time, when there is no pressure, you need to notice what you want. You need to trust. No, it's not put dot here. So you need to trust that what you want is right. You need to value what you want. Yeah, don't throw it out of the window. And then the last one is you need to communicate. Somewhere there. Yeah? And that's true for what, what you want. What's the last one? Communicate. So may I no don't put it there. You need enough time to notice, to trust, to value and communicate. Well you notice something in yourself. Uh, I have this itch there but I can't massage myself and I really need to have this point massaged. Can anybody do that? So you notice there's something going on and then you trust that, that, that this is actually really what you need and what you want. You value that because just like if you don't follow that thing, nobody will. And then you just ask the right person, hey, can you do that? Yeah, so this is the, the form. This is true for what you want and what are you you're willing to, so your limits. Okay. You have written value, but the fear of rejection actually is means that your value gets destroyed by rejection. That's that's true. You have to lose value. There's an uh, th there's an there's a really really important thing into that. Um, if I would come to you and I have a desire and the desire is I just want you to build me a house, can you do that? Then you say, yeah, sure, I can do that. And then, then you say that costs you about 100,000 Schweizer Franken. 
Sometimes they say, well, this is a lot of money. I just want to have it for 50. Yeah. I still want to have a house for 50. And you said, no, I can't do that for 50. I have a limit. 100 is the less. Otherwise, I'm not making any money and put so much work in there. I can't do that. And then I say, uh, yeah, I, I hear your limit. I respect your limit. And I still want to have a house for 50,000. And he said, yeah, I'm, but I'm not willing to do that. And I said, it's OK. I, I, I don't push you. I don't force you. But I still want to have my house for 50,000. So I stay in my <laughs> desire and I respect your limits. Yeah, I don't make my desire wrong. I value my desire. That's like, no, this is the value that I put in, on that. And you can put that on anything. My back hurts there. I need a massage. I want a massage. I want a cock rub. I want a blowjob. I want to have whatever. Uh, and even my partner says, just like, no, not now. It's just like, that's still, I want it. Yeah, I'm not needy. It's just, I'm not a child. I, I still have this desire. I own my desire. I want to have a blowjob. I love a blowjob. So, no, I have no time. I need to go. So I say, yeah, sure. <laughs> still, bye. Still want to have a blowjob. Do you get that thing? Yeah? Okay. But if I explain my limit clearly and that uh, we are okay, and um, when it is uh, in the action, there has a question come, and maybe who um, are the guardians of the limit? The person being asked. Uh, yes, if you have them, absolutely. You would, you, you need to be responsible for your limits, hundred percent. That's true. That's true. There's an entire chapter on trauma and trauma release and working through that and, and, and going through these dynamics. I would probably go a little bit off track right now, but that's true. So that's the reason today why we don't go in any partner practice. What I was suggesting in a few minutes is a, is a self-love practice. <laughs> and uh, if you feel like that there is a limit, then limit crossed that you couldn't say no, then it might feel like a violation afterwards, and that needs a reparation afterwards. It needs a conversation. It needs a checking in. It needs a feeling and communication. But that's a complete different animal. It's the yes place. The, uh, this trust is being built in the yes place. Yeah? If there is a shadow going on somewhere else, I'm not feeling comfortable doing that with a person. In the first place, I would not do that. Yeah? Before I let somebody in my garden, in my orgasmic garden, I'm yeah, very picky, I'm very sensitive and very careful who I let in my garden. Doesn't, I don't let anybody in there. I want people in my garden I'm sure of that. Don't stamp on the flowers and just ripping it out and running away. I just want people to stay there and enjoy and be present. That they can feel me. If people can't feel me, why would I let somebody in my garden? Fuck them. Okay. So, um, any other question? Let's do this one here. So this is all what we do now. Just like this entire thing, as you see, is a big iceberg. And we just play with one little tip and I hope you can integrate that and find that yourself, that you can use it however, wherever, whenever you want or need to. Yeah, so Self-love. Okay. So 